And where can speciation happen? And we have two options for where speciation happens. It either happens in different geographical locations or it happens in the same geographical location. The term, we use the term allopatric speciation when we're referring to speciation that happen in different geographical locations. To remember those terms, think allopatric is apart, so species that differentiate in different locations or far apart from each other, it's allopatric speciation, while sympatric speciation happens in the same location. So sympatric, same location, allopatric, apart, different location. And for a long time, we used to think that most of speciation happened allopatrically. We used to think that the species needed to be geographically isolated of the populations before they could become a separate species. Now we know that there are more examples of sympatric speciation and that it actually is quite common. Here is an example of allopatric speciation, meaning speciation that happened in a different geographical location. These are kingfishes from New Guinea and the original mainland population migrated and colonized smaller islands near the mainland or not so near that once they got to that area they didn't move back and forth so there was not much gene flow between these populations. The reduction in gene flow because of the geographical isolation resulted in the species, the population at this at each island becoming a separate species. So either they adapted to the new habitats in their new location and that led them to becoming different species as they evolved by natural selection to adapt to their new habitat. Or it could also be the result of genetic drift. If you remember the founder's effect, species, the, uh, the population that colonizes a new location does not have the same genetic composition as the original one and over time those differences can be further emphasized resulting in new species. So those two mechanisms, either natural selection by forcing them to adapt to their new habitat or genetic drift just caused by the founder's effect or the result of having a small population will lead to allopatric speciation. We have multiple examples of allopatric speciation, even if you are in close proximity, as long as there is a geographic barrier strong enough that prevents the species from moving from one area to the next, you will result, you will have allopatric speciation. So this example of this tipu is in a mount, rare rocky mountains in Venezuela, for example, they are far apart enough and their habitats are so different in between that a species from one area cannot really move to the other area, especially if we're talking about things like plants and animals that cannot fly. They, uh, they will specialize in or they will speciate in one mountain and those will be different from the species in another mountain because they cannot really move from one place to the next. On the other hand, we have sympatric speciation. This is when the species separate while still living in the same area and there is no barrier separating them so they could easily move from when they easily live in the same area in the same location they can encounter each other and nothing is separating them but they will speciate and they will still become separate species as they for for different reasons so for example here they are adapting to different niches. So they're using different food resources. So for example, one of these fish specializes in scraping algae and in order to scrape algae you need a special mouthpiece that is able to scrape that algae from the rocks. If you're a soil plankton eater on the other hand, now you need a, ma a mouth part to filter your soil plankton from the water. Or if you're an insect eater, now you need a way to catch insects as they're moving. Or different adaptations for different things that you eat, even some uh, these are cichlids from the Great Lakes in Africa. Some may even specialize in uh, scraping the scales off of other fish. So each of these types of feeding requires a specialized set of jaws. And as a result, as they become more and more specialized on their feeding source, they would become different from each other, and they will also be advantageous to just breed with those that have the same morphology as them so that their offspring will be equally specialized on that food resource. 
So if a so plants and eater were to mate with an algal scraper, their babies won't either be good for eating algae or soil plankton, so they will be at a disadvantage. So for that case, they should try to breed only with those of the same trait so that their offspring is best adapted to that particular food source. Another example of sympatric speciation are these apple maggot flies. They either eat on, but they, originally they all eat these hawthorns, but as apples start being grown in the area, some of the flies became specialized on living on the apple trees. It turns out that apple trees and hawthorns breathe at different times or produce fruits at different points in time. As a result, they are, the flies that specialize on the apple trees had to move their breeding time to match that of the production of the fruits of the apple tree. While the hawthorns kept their, the flies that breathe on the hawthorns kept their original breeding time. And uh, as a result, the flies that specialize on apple trees are becoming a separate species as they breed at a different point in time as the flies that live on the hawthorns. So this is also an example of temporal isolation acting to result in sympatric speciation. So these examples show us how the main thing that is driving sympatric speciation is competition for resources as the organisms in that population become more and more specialized on a specific resource. So we saw that in the cichlid fish becoming specialized in a particular food resource. We saw that in the flies becoming specialized in a particular type of tree. And this uh, results in selection that is enhancing the differences between the populations. And if you remember, the type of selection that moves species apart is called disrupted selection. So this is selection that is disruptive because it takes one population that was nice and homogeneous and turns it into two separate populations. We already mentioned the importance of genetic drift in speciation, but let's bring it back to understand how this can affect the speciation. So genetic drift, if you remember from the previous chapter, it is random events that affect the allele frequency. And this is particularly important for populations of a small size. So you have a limited number of organisms and some random event like an earthquake or a, a hurricane or anything that just happens to remove some of these individuals, if just for chance it affected more individuals with a particular genotype, that genotype would be greatly reduced in the population even though it had no effect on natural selection. So this is just a random event that got rid of that allele. So this is different from selection because in selection the allele disappears because it was not beneficial. Here, it has nothing to do with whether the allele was beneficial or not. It was just a random accident that led to that allele disappearing. And that explains, genetic drift explains why some of these lizards have very different dewlap colors. And it could be just by chance, this one turned out to have an allele to produce a red color, while this one had an orange, and so on. 